here at Abundant Acres Homestead, and today we're going to be planting some fruit trees. Add them to our fruit forest. Yep. And it's going to be a little bit of a windy day today, so we might have to do some voiceover. So it is what it is. So I tried sticking you guys here on the golf cart. Hopefully that cuts the wind sound down a little bit. But I um, wanted to talk to you about what we're doing and how we're doing it. And also it gets me out of having to dig holes. So what we're doing right now, and by we, I mean Kenny, um, is he is digging a hole. What you want to do with fruit trees is you want to dig it as deep as the root system is, but you want to go wider because you really want the roots to try to go out to the side so that it has more stability. Um, it will have a tap root and it will get down through there, but you don't really need to worry about that as much as you want to give it room for it to really spread out this way. It's about three times the size of the actual root ball system. Wide ways. Same depth. So what he's doing is he's putting all the soil that he's digging out into the wheelbarrow. And then we will amend the soil there in the wheelbarrow. So what he's planting first up here close to the road is a sweet cherry. With cherry trees, you want to make sure that you have at least two trees. Um, they do not self-pollinate, so they actually have to have a partner. So we will have two fruit trees to the front. And then we also have Kenny's favorite, the Fuji apple. So we're going to have two cherries, two Fuji apples, two peaches. And last night over at Indiana Backyard Gardener, um, we won a fig tree. Technically, we didn't win at um, Brampton Garden. I will put a link to her channel below, um, but she was nice enough. She actually won it and gifted it to us. So I want to thank both Rochelle and Adrian, um, and both of their channels will be in the description box below. Make sure you go check them out. Both awesome women. Um, and they gave me a fig tree, so I'm super excited about that. Uh, we also have some other fruits that we're going to be putting in this area. But for now, we're just going to work on getting these trees in the ground. So Kenny hit a root when he was digging for this tree and we got to get the root removed and it's too big to just chop. So before we get any comments, let me explain. So he has a chainsaw that has a junk blade on it and we keep it around just for this purpose because you never want to put your chainsaw into the dirt. But this one is already trashed and garbage and we actually keep it around just for this reason. So when you see him taking a chainsaw into the dirt don't freak out saying all right he's gonna ruin it because it's already ruined so but he's gonna get that root out of the way and we're gonna get this tree done <laughs> Okay, well, I've avoided the actual work long enough, so I'm going to get over there and help him. But I can't bring you guys along because the wind is starting to kick up, and you guys are honestly safer here out of the wind. So, yeah, I'm going to get to work. When I go to amend the soil, I'll bring you back over. So, this is what we have. Um, in this area of the yard, the clay isn't that bad. Um, you can tell clay soil if you clump it it will just kind of be like the clay that you played with in grade school. Um, this clay actually isn't too bad in our yard, but it still, see how it doesn't just like crumble? Um, yeah, it makes it hard and will hold a lot of water. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna amend this. Main thing we're gonna use is uh, we have peat and then we have some old potting mix. Um, this is from last year. It actually isn't new. Um, if we had manure, we'd be putting manure in it, but we don't right now. So it's going to be peat moss and leftover potting mix. Okay, now you should be able to see the difference in the soil structure. I can clump it. It still holds good, but it's really easy to break up. So, peat moss really does change the soil structure. And our trees will be much happier for it. 
I also recommend just leaving the grass in it because as this grass rots, um, what it's going to do is it's going to throw some nitrogen back into the soil and that's going to help the trees too. Okay, another thing I wanted to share with you is every time we plant a tree, I always do like this well around it because you want to make sure that when you put um, new fruit trees in, that you're, they're getting watered in really well. So what I do is I do this little well, let me show you. And then you can see I've just done like a little wall all the way around it. So now whenever I water or God decides to water it, it's got this little well and it will hold the water in there so i don't make it super tight so if it does rain and we get a lot of rain um it'll still break through the sides so it is not like a permanent well around it um but yeah it just helps with the watering and another thing i really like using the well for is adding nutrients now we do organic so what i actually do is i don't mulch around these trees technically with mulch but what would i but what I will do is as we mow the grass, I will take all the grass clippings and I will just set them in this well so that as it rots again, all the nitrogen goes down in there and feeds my new tree. Okay, well we got that apple tree planted and then we have this one here, which we were gonna plant over there to be its partner. But you can tell by looking at it, it's uh, dead already. So we're gonna take this back and probably pick up a couple peach trees and maybe we'll find something else I can talk him into. Shh, he's over there, he can't hear me, but you never know what you'll find in this store. All right, we got our two peach contenders, our Fiji apple, and our two cherry trees in. It's all done up. I'm waiting for them to go. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us. Everybody stay safe and God bless.